day three of my London holiday video blog, in which I went to the zoo and went to a well sick Divine Comedy concert. <laughs> everybody and welcome to my video blog for day three uh, hopefully it won't be as long as yesterday's so yes as promised on yesterday's headed from here my hotel to the zoo um again apologies for shadows and everything i can't get decent lighting in here um yeah to the zoo so um easy run up tube straight up to camden and then it's a Officially 15 minute walk, but at my pace, about 10 minute walk to the zoo. Um, thankfully, I checked before I left, but you know, it was it was open and there wasn't any problems or anything. Uh, and I'm glad I did because they've changed it now. You can't buy tickets on the gates, you have to pre book. Um, but you could pre book those slots, you could either pre book from 10 o'clock or from 12 o'clock. But you could go any time after you book. So if you you know book for ten o'clock, you can turn up at four o'clock if you like, and it wouldn't be a problem. Um, so I couldn't really see the point of having the slots. But I'd worked it out. I'd finished and was sort of aiming to leave. It was about ten forty ish. I was looking at it, and. I worked out I should be there before 12, so I booked for 10 o'clock slot, which wasn't an issue. Um, and sure enough, I got there at about quarter to 12, so I would have had to kill quarter of an hour if I'd booked the 12 o'clock slot. But the prices were the same, I checked that. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I, I checked. They are also, um, COVID measures, there, there's two one way routes, uh, sorry, three one way routes around the park covering each section that you had to take but there was no policing of that whatsoever and everybody was just doing what they have always done and just wandered willy-nilly round and also masks must be worn in the walkthrough areas to protect the animals but nobody was wearing them including the zookeepers so that was ignored as well uh so yeah got there had a wander around took lots of photos and little video clips which i will do a montage of in a second and do any narration over i feel necessary um so if you're not interested in lots of pictures of cute animals a what's wrong with you you make me sick animals are the greatest thing on this planet uh so but if you're not <laughs> b if you're not interested I uh, just skip forward until you see my face again once they start. Uh, have I got anything else to say about that? But can't wait until afterwards. No, don't think I can. So yeah, this is. I didn't take pictures or of everything. Just things that were particularly cute or interesting to me. Um, yeah, I'll sort of explain what I can as I go along. Some things I can't remember exactly what they are, but they looked cute etc. Uh, yeah, so here's my pictures and video. Okay, so first up we have the giraffes. I love giraffes and they were my favourite animal when I was a kid so I'm always happy to see the giraffes. Two of them are out and about, just still photos here. And then next to them were the zebras. There's three of them about. This one got very camera friendly to a bloke with a big camera who stood next to me came right up to the fence and posed for him and then next to them was the okapi they were in two little compartments and this one's actually sort of chatting to its mate well presumably its mate the other side and in the, this is the other side and some fools said this was a baby Akapi, but that's because they hadn't read the sign, but it's a funny South African word, I couldn't remember exactly what it was. These are wild dogs, wild prairie dogs, I think. Uh, then there's a walk through Lima section. Well, you're not allowed to touch the animals, obviously, but they're all around you doing their thing. Being very cute. 
Ah, uh, this is a monkey of some sort. <laughs> these, this is fruit bat. So the monkey and these and the next couple are in the rain well, rainforest section, rather, which is a big open section you can walk through. And the animals have got free range and go where they like. So there's some cute little monkeys. Which I have had to crawl over me. That's a sloth, so that's just in the corner all on its own. Uh, that was a turtle that was on the floor of the rainforest section. Uh, around to the meerkats. Meerkats being meerkats. So he was active. These three were fast asleep. But this one. He was always looking around at cameras. Looking around at another lady who had her camera out. And there's the three who were sleeping. Looking very cute. Uh, this is the otters. They've just come out of there. They've obviously just had a kip and they're hungry. Chirruping away. The penguin pool, always busy, always fun, watching the penguins, lots of noisy kids, I'm guessing my voiceover will have removed the audio so you can't hear in this next clip, there's a little girl saying, oh look, they've got jewellery on, they've got a bracelet, there's the little rings that identify them, she meant them flippers. But yeah, it's, it's really nice for Penguin Pool. You can really get good looks at them. There's nearly always a bunch of them around this side, showing off. And now we're in the walk through butterfly bit. So if you don't like butterflies and moths, you might want to close your eyes until I tell you you're safe. But personally, I love butterflies and moths. I think they're wonderful, beautiful creatures. It's lovely having just flying around. Gorgeous little one here. These are giant hawk moths. Uh, they're about the size of your hand. And believe it or not, they only live for 24 hours. So in 24 hours, they go from caterpillars to things this size and die and mate. Uh, obviously this is a lion, just to the right of the male lion is the female lion lying, lying down. Um, this is another angle of her, but it's through glass and it's not a great picture. This is a statue of a lion. Um, we have statues of cats and including lions in our garden, so I sent that to mum. Uh, this is a vulture. I was, I was sending pictures of the statues. This is a little red bird um, to mum saying oh we should have one of these so this is in the oh, there's something pavilion I can't remember what it's called but it's a walk through area with the birds uh, that was a very noisy white bird that went quiet as soon as I started filming but yeah they're flying all around you see in a moment uh, after this little picture of this little cutie you know, they're quite happy to be near you. This one's walking right in front, crossing the path, inches away from me. That's its mate, and another one on the right. Uh, then there's a, a a slightly cooler section of that pavilion with more birds in. This is a little sweeping shot, trying to get footage of as many of the birds as I could in one shot. This one, this was a uh, koi, kakepu, koi poo, whatever they're called. The first one got camera shy as soon as I got my camera out. This one was a too busy digging to notice me. Uh, llamas and the alpacas. One of the girls at work has got a thing about llamas, so I sent her these images. 
which she squeed over. Uh, this is a macaque with a little black blob in the middle. It's not a great image because of reflections, unfortunately. But he was showing off to viewing throngs. I remember gorillas being very inactive, as usual. Uh, some macaques. So this is one macaque. He's grooming the other one. And he's lifted its tail and he's picking the fleas off the tail. And the same pair from the other side. He was actually washing her just before I started filming and then stopped. And then this is a little baby one and he was chasing the birds that were flying into the cage. Very cute. It's obviously a parent of it. It was always close and keeping an eye on it. Uh, there's another nice statue that I thought we could have in our garden. Yeah, sleeping tiger. This one gave me the right hump. Ba boom. Uh, a Bactrian camel, you can tell. Cause B on its side. Capital B on its side is two humps. And capital D for dromedary has one hump. There you go. Bit of education for you. Another statue. Funky Gibbons. You know what I think? When they do this well, like they take the impact so, so well. Yeah, they just take the impact. I don't know Another sleeping tiger. This one obviously a lot more visible. Try taking images from a few different angles. I'm trying to see if I could get a decent shot, but not really because of where he or she was. A uh, couple of emus. There are wallabies in this enclosure as well, but couldn't see any of them. And then we're into the reptiles section, so if you don't like reptiles, you might want to close your eyes for a bit. Um, this is, I mean, it's a turtle. Nobody can have anything against turtles, surely. A nice turtle swimming around. Some idiot school children banging on the glass. A uh, giant lizard of some sort, but it was huge. Very pretty. Uh, if it's only snakes you don't like, I think there's only one image of a snake. This is some skinks. And we've got a blue newt. No, a blue gecko, rather. What am I talking about? Uh, another lizard of some sort. Crocodile, obviously. Uh, those blue geckos, they've been illegally imported and so taken to the zoo for keeping. Uh, this is a salamander, funny looking thing. And then a baby salamander being fed. Timed that just right. Suddenly saw his hand appear in the water. A very cute looking newt. Really pretty. Uh, blue dart frogs. These are highly poisonous even if you touch their skin. Beautiful things. And there's the snake. There were lots of other snakes, I just didn't take pictures of them. Uh, that was, these were big, ugly frogs, but they didn't come out very well. This is a huge, great bullfrog. Uh, some little frogs. Lake Oku Cape Well frogs, I think that says. Um, bobbing along, I like their little fat bellies as they were swimming. Reminded me of me. Uh, then a walk through monkey area. I'd been earlier in the day and it was closed because they were sleeping. This is sort of a new addition. They've moved into the aviary. Um, and whilst the monkeys are getting used to the, the new environment, they're doing sort of little guided walkthroughs rather than just letting you go willy nilly. The one you've just seen, who you could barely see in the bushes, is the one that reappears in a minute on the stairs. So they were little cuties. There was one, you're meant to be able to literally walk through, but you'll see in a second, behind the zookeeper, he was blocking the exit, so we had to double back on ourselves and go back through the entrance. Apparently they do that deliberately, they're crafty buggers. And then, 
these have just been fed. They were being fed, you can see the zookeeper on the right there. Um, so it was nice having them all around, active, rather than trying to spot animals, as is often the case. But yeah, I think that's coming to the end of my zoo footage. And yes, it is. So back to the, back to other me. Yep, so having done everything I wanted to do, the only bit I didn't do was the insect's house. Uh, not deliberately, I sort of accidentally missed it as I was doing the routes round. I, I sort of followed the one-way routes, but not exactly. Um, mainly because they were the circuits I would always take anyway. But yeah, somehow I bypassed the insect house bit, I wouldn't have done the spider walk through. No way, Jose. Um, but yeah, I accidentally missed it and I couldn't be asked to go back for that. It's not interesting enough to me. I wouldn't have taken pictures because I know people are squeamish about that sort of thing. Um, anyway, but yeah, I couldn't be asked to go back for that. So went into, oh, I did have about halfway round, just after the lions, did have a very nice ice cream. It was just a, you know, a soft serve in a waffle cone with a flake, but there was something about the ice cream. It was just really tasty. Um, yeah, enjoyed that a lot. And then, yeah, after I'd done the monkey walkthrough and sort of, I ambled back to the restaurant section and went in the terrace restaurant and had a a very passable fish and chips uh, it was haddock and chips the fish was okay it wasn't you know the best bit of fish i've ever had but i've had far worse I did have one bone in a fillet which annoyed me the very first mouthful but it meant for the rest of it i was always you know just slightly concerned that there's going to be a bone in it um nice batter on it though Skin on fries, very, very nice. Um, the tartar sauce was, it was okay and perfectly edible, but it didn't quite taste like tartar. It clearly was tartar and was meant to be tartar, you know, and even said on the menu with tartar sauce. But it just lacked a certain something, but it was, yeah, very nice and very edible. And I had a, I did sort of plastic, probably 300 ml cup of, Freshly squeezed orange juice that was very tasty and went down quickly. And I also grabbed a can of um, San Pellegrino lemon drink to sip more slowly. Uh, yeah, so while I was eating that, I decided, yeah, that was, I'd seen everything I wanted to see. So I went through the gift shop, picked up a, a couple of things for various people, and made my way back to the hotel to get ready for the gig. Um, got here and I sort of had about an hour to kill so that was plenty of time to just you know have a, a quick drink and catch up with various things on the phone and then shower and change and head to the Barbican for night three of the Divine Comedy um, so it was time for Fantasy Eckler and Regeneration so last night I had front row seats, I was in seat B49, which was the very end seat. Uh, so if you're facing the stage, very end on the left, stage right, uh, which is excellent. This is my view. Started about the usual time, just after half seven. Band came on, Neil came on. He wasn't as banterful last night. Um, I think, think he's getting a bit tired. So I've got something on my nose. Well, I have showered, honest. Whatever that was. Probably, well, you'll find out what it probably was. Uh, yeah. He wasn't quite as banterful last night. Although, he, during, you know, he did sort of become a bit more loquacious as the evening went on. But he didn't do any of the, the banter he'd done the previous two nights, you know, about the lack of showmanship and things like that. 
went almost straight into Fantasy Eckler with Generation Sex, which is, you know, he made it as an encore on Wednesday, and it's a song I've heard live many a time. It was an interesting one last night, because both these albums, I have heard every track played live already. Uh, they did a warm-up gig for Glastonbury just before the release of Fantasy Eckler at the Portsmouth Wedgwood Rooms, and that was the first time I ever saw them live, and they did all of Fantasy Eckler that night, I think. I certainly did most of it, but then certainly the other tracks I've seen them subsequently do. So there was nothing new to me, you know, as far as witnessing live, apart from having the strings and the horns there. Um, and then Regeneration, they did, I think it was just after the launch of the album. It was sort of the album launch tour. Again, they did a small gig at the Portsmouth Wedgwood Rooms that was broadcast, streamed live over the internet in the very early nascent days of that technology. Um, but I was actually at the gig rather than watching it live. And they played the whole album there. So, so the, as I say, the addition of the strings and horns was new and hearing it in order, of course, was new because they never did that at those gigs. Um, but yeah, still very, very, very enjoyable. Um, apart from... So the last track on side one of Fantasy Eclo is a track called Eric the Gardener, which is a peculiar but great song, apart from the fact it has an outro that goes on far too long. It's about a five-minute outro. It's ridiculous um, and repetitive as well. It's If you've watched my album ranking, it's what ranked Fantasy Eclo down fairly low on my list. Uh, I think it's number five or six. Which is fine, and you know, I sat there just letting it wash over me. Neil even left the stage at that point, which he hasn't done so far through any of the instrumental bits. He's always just sat down on stage. Um, but yeah, he, he left the stage for that. And I was just letting it wash over me, and it was just coming to an end. And the lady two seats along from me suddenly leaned forward, hand over her mouth, and sprayed vomit everywhere. Lovely. Now, thankfully... Um, most of it went onto the bloke sat immediately to her right, who wasn't with her. The bloke who was with her on the left, he must have got some on him. Um, and I just got about two or three, a couple of specks, literally tiny, tiny, tiny specks there and there on different t-shirt, obviously. And a couple on my jeans that I could just sort of brush off. You know, it was, it was nothing, it didn't bother me in any way. You know, I know some people are funny with sick, but it doesn't bother me at all. Um, most of it was on the floor, tiny little bit on the stage. But of course that was then, you know, she immediately sort of, and the guy she was with sort of got up and went away and they, you know, told her, obviously, staff what had happened. And after an inordinately long time, I think they were more concerned about her. Um, they came along and just said, you know, you're all right. Do you want to move seats? And I was fine. I sort of had to move my legs around slightly to the left because the floor was a bit there. Um, but otherwise it was fine and I was just enjoying the gig. But, and the guy who, to her right, who'd got covered, had gone and cleaned himself up. So... You know, she said, oh, are you all right? Do you want to move seats now? I'm fine, fine. She said, oh, I'm going to leave it to the interval. I said, yeah, that makes sense. And she left. And sure enough, come the interval, they came and cleaned it all up and it was fine. But then they came and checked, you know, the, uh, just before the second half when the, the other guy who'd cleaned himself up had returned to his seat. She just came and checked with him that he was all right. Um, and then the guy who was with the girl who was sick, or lady who was sick, um, he returned as well towards the end of the interval. I, I didn't quite hear because he was talking to the other guy, whether, she, so his back was to me as he was talking to him, but whether she'd gone home or whether she was waiting for him, I, I wasn't entirely sure, nor much cared, to be honest. Apparently she was f fine, just very embarrassed really, um, but I didn't hear why she 
she was drinking a can of, you know, a cocktail can. But I don't think it was drinking juice. She didn't seem drunk at any point. Uh, whether she'd just not eaten or something, I don't know. Anyway, um, so yes, yeah, so that was the eventful and the reason for my well sick introduction. Um, but yeah, then that was the only sort of eventful bit of the night. Uh, did get my first bit of celeb spotting. Uh, com British comedy nerds will appreciate this. But sat actually about two seats along from where I was sat the previous night. I spotted um, Mark Steele and Shappy Corsandi, the comedy, comedy, the comedians um, who are a couple, have been for about a year and a half, I think. Um, we sat there enjoying the gig. I sort of spotted them just before the gig started as I was sort of looking around to see how full the place was. Oh, that looks like Mark Steele, but, but with long straggly hair. I thought, oh, that is Mark Steele, because that's Shappy. Um, and um, I was, when we were all stood up, clapping at the end of each album, once again, standing ovations, um, and as we were clapping, I was sort of looking around, enjoying the view of everyone clapping as we were waiting for them to come back on for the encores, and they were still there clapping away. Uh, and as I walked out, they were just in front of me, and they were heading to the backstage area. So presumably they were there as guests of Neil. Um, they must know him somehow. I can't, you know, nothing's leaping to mind as something they might have been on together, but I know he's got, got lots of contacts in the comedy world. Um, so yeah, that was it. My highlight was being uh, finally being able to do some celeb spotting. Um, I didn't... I, I probably was close enough as we left that I could have bothered them, but, you know, they, they were off duty. They were there to have a nice night. I didn't want to spoil that for them. Um, yeah, otherwise, encores were when the lights go out all over Europe from Promenade, so we had that night one, and tonight we fly it again was the closer. I suspect it will be next two nights as well. It's... The, the usual Divine Comedy gig closures uh, anyway, and it's just a natural, fun, upbeat, joyful end to the concerts. Uh, so yeah, that was yesterday. Um, um, as I record this, I haven't obviously put in all the video and photos from London Zoo, so I'm not quite sure exactly how long this will be, but I'm guessing about half an hour or so. Um, so thank you for sticking with it. And, Thankfully, it's not as long as yesterday's uh, plan for today. Forecast seems okay. So, yeah, head to Camden. Do, hopefully, some record shopping. The market. I, before I go, I'm going to check out the other record shops around there. I did spot one of them yesterday as I was walking to the zoo, um, which I think is sort of rock and roll, 50s sort of era specific and up to punk I think even but it seems to pride itself its website is although it's not the name of the shop its website is www.nohitrecords.co.uk I think um, so I'll, I'll check exactly what they stock and whether it's worth me going in there but a couple of doors down from them was a music specific charity shop not an Oxfam music one it was not a you know a known charity if you like not you know one of those it was but it was shut as I went to the zoo it didn't open till twelve but when I came back it was open and I sort of glanced through the door and I could see racks of albums and singles so I shall pop in there at least depending on how long that takes I might then go to uh, again I'll do a bit of research somewhere else that's got a I know there's a a little chain of I think it's three record shops that dotted around London that do new and sit and free loved um, so I might go and visit at least one of those depending on time so we'll see yeah so it might be another longer one if I've got stuff to show tomorrow 
but yeah that's it that's my plan for today um thank you for watching like comment and subscribe and i'll see you tomorrow thanks bye <music>